Meanwhile, concerns over agrarian reform to empower communities have been under the spotlight since the Minister of Agriculture, Toko Didiza, took over. Community organizations are working with agricultural reform beneficiaries to empower them in accessing and working on the land. Vumelani Advisory Fund works with land reform beneficiaries to identify opportunities for partnerships with private investors. And this model is called the Communal Private Partnership Model, and it enables communities that acquire access to land under the Land Reform Program to enter into partnerships with private parties who can help support them. So to tell us more is Peter Sito, who is Chief Executive of the Vumelani Advisory Fund. Thank you very much, sir, for coming. Thank you for having me. All right. When we talk about these types of partnerships, how do they play out? Well, I, I think at a starting point, one needs to um, highlight the fact that uh, we are all aware of the challenges that we are all, we've all faced in the land reform space, where large tracts of land that had been transferred to beneficiaries of land reform were unproductive. So as Vumelana, we decided to intervene in that space specifically to assist these communities in order to productively use these new assets that they have acquired. So we embark on an investment mobilization process assisting these communities to identify um, relevant uh, investors who can actually partner with them. Because on the one hand you've got these uh, communities who've got access to land but who do not have access to finances, access to resources and even access to market. And we marry them or rather make sure that they partner with your investors who've got access to finance, access to markets and their technical know-how. At the moment, there is a problem regarding the risk of investment in the agricultural sector, given that many people could not be having the requisite experience in dealing with the kind of investment, uh, in the huge amounts that you have already spent over the past five years. How have you gauged the risk mitigation? And going forward, what is it that you can use as an experience that has laid the foundations for these farmers to be able to take off from now? Well, uh, the Vumelana model really mitigates that risk in the sense that we assist the community, we do an assessment with the community to check what, are, what, are, what is it that is required. We utilize what we call uh, transaction advisors, independent transaction advisors, who would actually work very closely with the community and embark on a process to mobilize a private investment. Now, you must remember that you've got communities on the one hand who do not know these investors on the other hand or the other end of the spectrum you've got your investors who do not really understand this community who perhaps even view them with suspicion or they are viewed to be risky you know so what our model does is really to de-risk that and ensure that uh, commercially viable partnerships can be uh, agreed upon between these two parties. You know, Mr. Still, there had been some models that were applied before, and one would wonder if, one would wonder if they have worked before. For example, uh, more than 15 years ago, South Africa came up with the presidential nodal development programs, where some former agriculture students from universities would be given a grant and a farm to run so that they can be consistent and profitable. But some of those projects are history. So with the kind of model that you are telling us about, have you tested other models to see if they can work to avoid a vicious cycle of people coming into the market, fizzling out, getting new ones, going to different communities, failing, succeeding, you know, blowing hot and cold all the time? Yeah, I think you're raising an important point, Colin. Uh, we move from a premise that says we cannot rely on government to do everything. So our model really focuses on tapping on private sector expertise as well as private sector investment. You know, remember the private sector players have got the technical know-how. So part of the whole thing is to really ensure that there is skills transference. Over the last five years or so. We have um, successfully concluded about 19 projects which with the potential to raise just under a billion rands in, in investments, you know, putting really into productive use in excess of 70,000 hectares. These are hectares which would have otherwise been 
uh, not productive and really creating in the excess of 1,700 jobs. We also have projects that we are currently negotiating, which once concluded are likely to raise, we are likely to raise in excess of 1.6 billion, in addition to the 970 plus million that I've talked about, just under mm -hmm. a billion. So would you then say there is confidence in the agricultural sector in as far as assisting with land reform? Well, our experience has been that um, the, the, the South African, the private sector is really keen. South Africans and, and business in particular, they're really keen to see land reform, successful land reform programs. I think what we need to do is to really harness the, the goodwill that is out there, you know. But it is important at the same time to make sure that we can capacitate these communities so that they can be better partners in this whole relationship. Oh, right. Thank you so much for making time to speak to us here. Much appreciated. Thank we have so uh, Mr. Peter Sito, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Vumelani Adversary Fund, speaking to us about uh, reforms in the agrarian sector. Let's take a